I believe God for the impossible 2017, that God's going to do the impossible in your life individually and in our corporate body. I truly believe that. Amen. We believe the impossible. He's, it takes great faith. Amen. And I believe God's going to give you that faith. And your unbelief will not embarrass God no. in 2017. Amen. We value loving. We value loving. We value loving everyone yeah. as family. Yeah. Amen. Say it with me. We value, we value loving, loving everyone as family. Yeah, everyone well, of course, right? Everybody says, yeah, of course. But we have to really love people that maybe be unlovable. Amen. My heart, I mean, this is my favorite one out of the four series that we're going to be teaching. Uh, this week, or the next four couple weeks, this is my favorite one. Because I believe God called us to love everybody. Amen. In our church family, we want everybody. We want the scholars to be in our church. And we want those that just don't have anything in our church. Amen. We want people from all over the world, every nation represented. I just believe God wants, we're going to be a church that's going to uh, be an example. Oh my God. Uh, to other people. We're not going to segregate ourselves because of culture or differences. We're not going to do that. We're going to do whatever we can. I think the battle that we feel as pastors is the, the spiritual battle that we, that, that we go through. And I think our board, I think the people that have been here for a while know this is not easy to do. When we say, God, we tell the enemy, get out of here. You're not, you don't own it, Madison, Wisconsin. We have authority over this area right here. We believe that God's going to raise up a church that everyone can feel welcome here. Amen. Amen. Everybody is welcome in this church. This is my heart. It's been my heart since I've been here in 2005 that everybody comes. So sometimes we have a lot of people in the church and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have people come and because of our diversity, they don't stay. And I myself is saying, how can you label yourself as a Christian? I'm preaching on, I'm sorry. Andy's actually preaching. I'm just doing an introduction today. Let me get back on my nose. But I'm serious. God wants to do something great in us if we just love one another. Amen? Come on. Say amen. I know it's good. Amen. Everybody, say it. We value loving everyone as family. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 10 and uh, 25 through 37. is the story about the Good Samaritan. In the beginning of the story, in verse 25, we see that there's an expert of the law that came to Jesus, kind of challenged Jesus. And he said, te teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So the question is, that's a question everybody has. What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? It's not our sermon title, that's a sermon for another time, but this is really an important question because the next thing he says is, what is and Jesus asked him, what is written in the law? Since he was an expert of law, he asked him, what is written in the law? He says, uh, and how do you read it or how do you interpret it? That's what's really important. Here's the law, you know the law, but how do you interpret it? And then he goes, says, he answered, this is the, the gentleman says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Just think about that for a moment. He was answering the question to Jesus, what does the law say? And he said this, he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your uh, strength, with all your mind. And then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And this is where we want to talk about today a little bit more. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. Do what he just said. Love God and love your neighbor. You do this and you will live. You'll have eternal life. But then he goes on to share a story. I love the story and I'm just going to read. I'm not going to read. I'm just going to tell you the story. So on this road that goes down to Jerusalem, there was a man who got beat up, robbed, and almost left for dead. Then you have two people. You have a priest and a Levi, two religious people, came by and they walked past them and didn't help the man. But then we have the Samaritan. The good, we know the story, the good Samaritan, right? We see this good man, this Samaritan. He sees him. He has compassion for him. He goes and bandages up his wounds. He said he put oil and, and, and wine on his wounds. I don't know what that does. I, I know it's a whole sermon in itself. I don't get into it. But he, 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 he provided for him. He took up his resources and he helped that poor man. He put him on his animal. It says donkey or horse, we don't know. Probably a donkey. He put him on a donkey and took him to an inn. And at the end, he, he turned him over. He brought, he rented a room. He took care of the man. He even told the innkeeper, listen, this man is hurting really bad, right? 
I don't know what it's going to cost to help him, but what I give you, I'm going to give you some money. I'm going to give you, out of my wealth, I'm going to give you something to help him and take care of him for a period of time. When I come back, if there's any more money that's owed, I'll pay for it. How many would do that today? Amen. Right? Help somebody. Your car broke down. I'm, I'm going to go take your car. I'm going to fix your car. I'm going to take, or I'm going to take it to the mechanic. I'm going to have him fix the car. Then at the mechanic, I'm going to go back afterwards. I'm going to pay the rest of the bill. I mean, that's, that's significant. I mean, that's, that's what he did. He paid out of himself. And this is what, at the end of the story, look at the end. It says, verse 37, the experts of the law replied, the one who, you know, who's the neighbor was a question. And he said, uh, the expert replied, the one who had mercy on him. He talked about the good Samaritan. And then Jesus said this, go and do likewise. See, all of us are on a road. This road that goes down from this, this, this part of the, uh, this, this uh, area is, you can actually walk it, you can go to Jerusalem and see this area. It's a very windy, mountainous road. It's a lot of uh, uh, valleys, there's a lot of places for robbers to hide. Even today, people are getting uh, robbed in the, in the same area, and it goes down to Jerusalem. So it's a really difficult uh, road to travel, and people were kind of scared to do that. So I think the Levites, the priests, maybe they're afraid that they're going to get robbed. They didn't see, they didn't look at him as helping, they just looked at him as, hey, I have some obligation, I gotta get to Jerusalem because I have to get there for, for the ceremony or whatever. They were, they were religious, they were, they were not compassionate and loving at all. Martin Luther King said this on his sermon on April 3rd, 3rd 1968, um, if I don't stop to help, what will happen? Think about that for a moment. If we don't stop and help people, what's going to happen to them? You know what happens when we don't stop and help people? They hate God. Mm -hmm. They blame God. Mm -hmm. They're mad at God for the situation. Every time I meet people that's in a ter terrible situation and I want to help them, they're mad at God because they're in their situation. Yeah. That's what the enemy does. So, um, the Good Samaritan... Look at this. A good Samaritan, it cost him something. It cost him his uh, time, because he was probably going somewhere also. It cost him time. It cost him money. It cost him of his, the stuff that he had, he was carrying. And then it cost him, it cost him love. <laughs> it cost him the love. Amen? So, uh, like last week, we had a scale of 1 to 10. Okay? So I want you to imagine yourself. Where are you on the scale of loving people? Let's say 10 is Jesus, okay? Jesus, I mean, he's perfect. He's 10. His love is, is, is amazing and awesome. And now on the other end of the scale, let's say it's the devil, okay? It's like the enemy. It's like, you know, minus one. I hate people. I don't want to talk to people. I, 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 I'm just going to go home, do my own thing. You know, if that's you, then put a one there, okay? But if you're like, like maybe, maybe occasionally I help people. Maybe, uh, you know, once in a while I give you know, a few bucks here, or maybe I'll stop and decide to help somebody with a broken tire, or, you know, maybe at work you help somebody. Give yourself, you know, whatever, five or six. If you're that super guy, you know, or gal, you know, that you just, like, whatever people need, I'm there, right? Call me at two in the morning, I'm there. Give me, you know, I'll listen to your complaining and grumbling, but I love you through it, right? If that's you, maybe you're on the eight or nine scale. But just take a minute. Right in the back of your bulletin, there's a little, um, you can write it down. Just write it down where you're at. Just, just evaluate yourself. It's really good to evaluate ourselves. Last week we looked, we looked at faith, you know. Do I have great faith or do I have lack of faith? And we evaluate ourselves for you that day. And if you weren't here last week, go on to our website and listen to the sermon. It will tell you our value about the impossible being possible. So go on there and listen to the sermon. We, we post them on our website every week. Um, and then this, and anyway, you see how we value it. This week we're going to evaluate ourselves. Do we, do we love? Are we loving? I love my wife. I mean, I love Tina. Man, we've been together for a long time. She still, I still get excited when I see her, you know? She's gone, she was just gone yesterday to go get groceries and come back. I was excited. You know, I bought her a special, I bought her a gift the other day. Um, you know, it's just a coffee cup, and then when you put the hot coffee in, it changes color, so it's a black mug, but then when you pour water in it, it turns in, it shows two little rings, and I love you on it, and I always loved you, and I always will, that kind of little saying on it. It was really cute, 
Well, I was, well, I was tracking it on, online. Right, it was Saturday, Andy and Rachel were over yesterday, and so uh, the mailman came about, I don't know, 9 30 or so, and I heard him uh, throw the stuff in the, in the mailbox, and it, it made this noise, you know. And I got up and I ran to the door, opened up to get the mail, and I was disappointed because I didn't see it, but it was, he had put it on the bench that's next to our mailbox, so then it was right there. So I ran in the house and I gave it to her, you know, and I waited, couldn't wait for her to open it up, and she's like, oh, good, a black coffee cup, you know. <laughs> And you know, I was a little confused, but then I told him, go put some coffee in it. So she washed it up with some coffee in it, and it turned white, and it was perfect. She saw that, so I was like, I, I just get excited. I love her, right? So I did anything for her. And I think that same love that I have for Tina is the same love we should share with the world around us. So get great yourself. Where are you at? Nine, ten, one or two? Be honest with God, because he already knows. <laughs> and this is just a test for you to be honest with God, right? Amen? Love you, and it says, let's look at just last, and again, just, I don't want you to look at your life like your whole life, I just want you to look at last week. Let's just look at last week. What did we do last week that was loving? I bought Tina a coffee cup, so. I think I'm up there. About six or five, somewhere around there. Did we attempt to reach out to anyone in need last week? Did we show compassion to somebody that needed it? Just last week, just evaluate yourself. Did we, as a, as a church, did we go out and just love on people that are needy? Or did, even in our church family, did we call somebody? Did we take them out to dinner or coffee? Did we stretch out from our normal life and go and say, hey, I want to show some compassion? Amen. <laughs> yeah. How about in our community? Did you call somebody like I did and got yelled at? Does <laughs> I want to send us some love? But it's okay because I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna get on top of Do it again and do it again. Because I'm I don't have an agenda. When I call people, I don't have I just want to love on them, right? And that's what we need to people are so tired of being used in our community. And they're so against church. My neighbor, right? I'm having lunch with him on on um, hope he listens to this. I'm having lunch with him on Tuesday, right? He grew up in a church all his life. And his first thing to me, we had a uh, reference a, a few weeks ago. The first thing to me was, I'm tired of pastors asking me to do stuff. I, didn't, I was just taking on the reference. I, had not, I just wanted to get to know the guy. And because, because that's what people do, right? We have, and, and everybody, all my guys in the back know, because every time I call them, it's for something. But I love them. They already know that. It's already given, right? But then we love somebody in our community. Did we stop... In our daily normal routine, and show God. Isn't that part of what we're supposed to do as believers? Yes. I know we're supposed to witness and pray for the sick and build it, but just to love on them. Evaluate yourself. Did we invite somebody from our missional community out for lunch, or dinner, or coffee, or call them and pray for them? Hey, I've been thinking about you today. Or maybe just even somebody outside our initial community. You have to evaluate yourself. Yes, we believe that loving everyone as part of the family of God is what God's heart is. Everybody. Can we as a church begin to move closer to having the eyes of the Father and see our community like he sees it. Think about it. Have the eyes of the Father. How does Father God see us and see Madison? Does he hurt for Madison? Yeah. Do we, do, do we have, can, we, can our heart just beat a little bit faster when we see a need instead of going, oh, <laughs> I, got, I got stuff to do, like the priests and the Levites did. Why are we here, Madison? Why did God put you here? Why did he put us here? Why do you have the job you have? And why do you have the wealth that you have? Why do you have the skills that you have? Because I believe God wants to use them to show his love and compassion. So people that you work with, God placed you there. It's not by accident. It's not by your skills or your ability that you got the job or place you have. Amen. God gave that to you. Everything you have is God's. Right. Do you believe that? 
I know it's hard to get that in my thinking. It took me a while to say, yes, my car, I can give it up in a moment. Yes, my house, I can give, I can ask people to live there or move in or, or sleep over. All that I have is his. That's hard because we're selfish people. Can you say amen? But it's really true if we look at it that way. The shirt I have, I can give to you because... Think about that good Samaritan. How did he bandage the wounds of that guy? Did he have like a first aid kit on his camel? He probably took his shirt off and ripped it up in pieces and tied it so, and, and bound that, that man's wounds to get him back onto the horse or onto the camel and get him down to the end. I mean, that's what I look at. He just took up his resources and gave everything because he saw somebody hurting. Amen. That's what we want to see in our church. Pastor Andrew's going to come. He's going to give you three points to help us to learn how to love everyone as family. Amen. Come on, Pastor Andrew. So we don't have the, the slide up there, but we value loving everyone as family. And I know as we take a, a moment and we do these evaluations, sometimes I go, oh me, right? Or oh my, right? And then, but the goal is in this message, right, is not that uh, we just stay at whatever scale we're at. We say, okay, yeah, I, I can evaluate this last week or maybe this last year, and I'm like, okay, I'm down like two area, and I, I really need to grow in it. Well, that's why we're, we're speaking this message. That's why we said, as a, a, a church, we've said that we are a family of servant missionaries sent to make steps, right? We want to value loving everyone as family. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to, how are we going to move up on the scale? This, the, today's message isn't just, okay, where are you at? But, but where we're going? How can we grow in this? How can yeah. we be a people that really do represent this love factor that the Father has and has shown to us and has lavished on us, right? So we value loving everyone as family, that God planned in his love for everyone to be adopted as his own children because it pleased him. Because it, it was his pleasure to love on us. It was his pleasure to adopt us as, as family. Yeah. We've been watching a, a TV show lately called oh, White Collar, and, and it's an interesting, interesting TV show. It, it's about this uh, character that had committed a bunch of forgery crimes. So he was really artistic, and so he would like forge different documents and things like that. And there are different aspects in this uh, show that talks about art. One of them recently was about uh, was about sculpting, and so they had these big old pieces of marble in the show. And as we're talking about sculpting, they talk about sculpting this thing and, and making all the lines perfect on it, right? But they but it started with a 500 pound uh, block of marble. And as an artist, he said, it, it's not. Uh, an artist, what is, someone was asking him, you know, what is what is the skill? Or how do you how do you sculpt something beautiful? How do you make this beautiful sculpture out of this big, you know, clump of clump of rock? And he, and he says he says I I can see before he makes it he goes he goes the the sculpture is already in the rock. Yes, that's right. I just use my skills to get it out. I just use and and specifically you talk about love that he had of showing to sculpt away what wasn't there to get this beautiful uh, to get this beautiful sculpture out of this block of, uh, of marble. And so this morning, uh, we're hoping, we're praying that, that we know the love, each one of us in this room has experienced the love of the Father. The love of the Father is already in each one of us, and we're praying that through these messages as we're talking about our values, that God begins to sculpt, He begins to chisel out so that the true nature of who we are shines through. Because I know each one of us, we're, man, we're full of love. And we, we're a loving group. We, we hug each other's necks. We, we see each other. We, man, we have half time. And right, we're all chatting up. And, and talk. I mean, we, we're a loving bunch of people. But we know that if we're going to go further, we've got to move beyond just loving each other, loving those easy things, into loving the difficult things. The, art, the artist looks at this piece of rock that looks like nothing. I mean, I'm not an artist. I can't really, I can't figure out how they see that. But they, they see it. And they, man, they sculpt out of it something beautiful. Love is in each one of us, and we're going to sculpt it. We're going to make it shine out and make it bright, so that this year we're going to go further. Remember, our, our message, our series is uh, is um, lift the values that will take us further in 2017. Love in everybody is going to take us further in 2017 than than we did in 2016. We're going to love each other. Our families are going to be units of love. Our, our individual relations are going to be units of love. Our church is going to be a unit of love. And man, we're going to express love everywhere. 
So as we're looking at these, we're going to look at these three insights. You know, how do we become a more loving uh, church? How do we get this value to be inside of us and to shape us and to, to form us? Uh, we've got to think a little bit about what is love, right? And, and I know there's a familiar passage. I want to encourage you to read this uh, this week because uh, if anything in life I've learned, um, I've had a really uh, I, I've had a really blessed life. I don't know if you guys know that, but my, uh, some of you, or most of you know that Pastor Bob and, uh, and Pastor Tina are my parents, which is pretty awesome. And the more I was, <laughs> and the more, the more that I uh, was doing, especially when I was doing uh, ministry with college students, or even the more I'm getting to know people's story, uh, the more I realized that I really got an experience of love that many people didn't, that I had a pretty, pretty awesome, uh, awesome life. So I want to encourage you this week, when we're thinking about this uh, value, uh, loving everyone as family, um, to read chapter, uh, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to go through because that, that's a whole series, just in trying to break down what love is. But to, it describes what love is. And I know most of the time uh, we read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 around Valentine's Day, and we do it at every wedding, right? You know, that's a that's a typical thing. But it's not just a, a marriage um, a passage there. It's not just a it's not just a love between a, a man and a woman. It describes what love is. I mean, this is just a little briefly, uh, like love is patient, it's kind, it doesn't envy, it boasts, it's not proud. I mean, like these things, I mean, that's what love is. I want to break down just in a, in a moment just what I kind of try to summarize uh, love in. Love is when I think about how, how do I love or what is this love thing, I think about how would I treat somebody else if what I wanted for me is going to be true for them. Yes. If Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Right? And uh, sometimes I need a little bit more of what, what, how would I treat somebody else if what I wanted for me is going to be true of them? Yes. Because I mean, if they, but I, I mean, I want the best for me. Right? I, I, want the, I want the good food. I want the best clothes. I want the, I want the love and affection. I want all of my needs to be met. I, I, I want, you know, to, to succeed in every area of my life. I mean, I, I want this for myself. Right? I, I don't think there's too many people out there that would say, you know, I want some negative thing to happen in my life, and if they do, hey, we're, that's the person probably that needs some expression of love in their life, right? They need somebody to come alongside them and love them and say, you know what, actually there is a better future, there is a, there is a brighter thing to look forward to in life, and sometimes we do need to love on somebody in that nature, but how would I treat them if what I wanted for me would be true? That's what love is, that's what encapsulates love. We talk about uh, the, demonstration, the greatest demonstration of love, that it was God's pleasure to adopt us as his children. How did he do that? Jesus gave up his life for us. That Jesus, right, he, he, it says in Ephesians, another passage that's talking a lot about marriage, that Jesus, he actually gave up his own life and gave the church a better position than he got. Yeah. That's what love is. Right? I'm going to give up, I'm going to give them a better position than what I got. I'm going to, I'm going to shower them with what I want for myself. So how, how are we going to do this? How, I mean, how are we going to be a church that loves everybody like family? And a pastor started with this, but this is the first point, that in order to love everybody as family, we have to see them with the eyes of the Father. So let's turn together to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 is a, is a great passage uh, and talks a lot about the, uh, the position that we have and, and what we have in God. And it's, it's a really encouraging passage to read, but we're going to look specifically at Ephesians chapter 1 and we're going to look here at verse 5. And it says this, In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. In verse 7 it says this, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. 
It's just like the artist, right, in the show that we're watching. It, uh, he looks at that lump of marble, 500 pound, rough edges, you know, square thing, right? And he says, man, inside of that is something beautiful. I just gotta, I gotta let it out. The eyes of the father, and something I'm, I'm, I'm learning, man, we're getting close, Rachel and I, to having a kid in our home. Uh, we just had another meeting this week with a, uh, with a social worker, and like, we're talking months instead of years now that we're getting close to it, and I'm, I'm getting excited about that. But I, I see this when I'm looking at the different parents around me, the way parents look at their children, Okay, not when they're acting up and yelling and screaming and running, right? Okay, but that that moment that you have when you look at them and there's like there's like that that gaze and that like wow that value that like whoa, especially when they're babies, right? Like whoa, this is this is the, the amazing value. I mean, the the dreams and all the things that you think about. I mean, like wow, right? Do you have that kid, right? The father looks at us and he says that it was his pleasure. To adopt us yeah. as his children. Oh, yeah. He sees value in us. The, the word of God in Romans talks about that while we were yet sinners, while we were actually like worthless, while we were like, like we were just like this lump of, of marble stone. He looked at us, he said, I see all those rough edges, I see uh, all these, and I you know, I value you. I want you to be a part of me. I want to own, I want you to be my child. He sees value in us. No matter who we are, no matter what our background is, it's very clear, no matter what our background is, from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, it's always about the nations, it's always about people with differences in their life. And he values. And if we said, you know, if we're going to be people that say, you know, I want to love everybody like family, that we've got to find in ourselves be able to look at somebody, no matter what they may look like. You know, the pastor said he called somebody just to love on them, and, and immediately they yelled at him. He called them and he got yelled at them. Because I'm just trying to love you. And, I, and sometimes it's rough, right? Sometimes it's not easy to say, you know, I wanna, there's, there's somebody I want to love. There's somebody I know I need to love. I, I need to treat like family. And, and sometimes it's a, it's a little rough. Sometimes it's a little, it's nothing. Man, if you talk about the Samaritan in, in that situation when I mean, he could have been robbed. I mean, there was nothing in it for him to, to bind up the wounds of this man that was bleeding there. There's nothing in it for him. He said, you know what? I value, I, I'm going to love, I'm going, I value this. And sometimes it's a hard thing to get inside of us, but when we do, yeah. man, then we're able to, then we're able to look past the hurt, and look past the situation, look past how hard it is, look, look past, I mean, and no matter how many times my, my kid screams, I mean, no matter what happens around me, I'm going to, I can love because I value that person. I can see yeah. with eyes of the Father. Ephesians 1 5, it says that it was his pleasure. It was his pleasure. To love. So sometimes my prayer is if I want to go further this year, I'm going to have to pray, God, would you help me to pleasure, have find pleasure in extending love and treating others like family? Yes. All right, let's look at this the second point. I believe that we can we can love everybody as family. If it's going to require us, or if we can show no partiality. Wow. Oh, this is what it's talking about, right? So let's look at James chapter 2. James is a little book. We, sometimes <laughs> I, I skip right over it, but if you get like to the first and second Peter part in the, Old, in the New Testament, then you've gone just too far. So James is a small little book right before first Peter. First Peter. James chapter 2, this is, a, this is a, some of those uh, hard scriptures, right? But if we know anything about these different books in the New Testament, there's their writings that were written to churches. And these churches, I mean, they had some really good things happening. There were people being saved, they had Bible studies, they were, they were doing some good things. And, and every once in a while, the, the, uh, the leaders would need to write something and bring a little correction. They said, hey, you guys are doing really good, but uh, here's a little, a little advice, here's some of the things. And, and here James, he writes this in, uh, in chapter 2 about this subject of, uh, of not showing partiality. And it says this. Verse 1, my brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes, 
also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you sit here and sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Help me to, to love like family. You know, how, uh, I don't know what family gatherings look like in, 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 your, in your home, and so I, I know that some, sometimes we have you know, different experiences in life, but I know when I, when I have a, a big family gathering, maybe we go over to um, my grandparents out in Pewaukee area, or we're going down to Louisville and, and being with Rachel's family. Uh, the first time you come in the door is always like a big event. Right? And for, you come to the door and it's a, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. And you get the big hugs, right? You got the kisses on the cheeks, you're chopping, and then you're slapping each other's back. Maybe you brought something for grandma, you got a little gift, and you're exchanging gifts and giving hugs. And you guys have experienced that too, right? So, I mean, there's this, there's this, this experience of family, this greeting time is an important thing. And, and maybe sometimes in, in the U.S., we don't always kind of get this, this greeting moment time. But when I get around my, my different friends from different cultures that, that on the university or in my, in my neighborhood, I mean, this greeting time is a big thing. Man, it's, an, it's not just a, a, hey, how you doing? All right, catch you later. You know, I'll sit on the couch. Like, I mean, it takes time to greet, to say hello, to, to, to catch up. James says, you know, if, if we're going to be a, a church that loves everybody like family, you guys got to get this part right. <clears throat> You gotta get this part right away, where you show no partiality. No matter no matter who comes through the door, you greet them the same way. And you, you all have been around family. You know when that one family member comes in the door, and it, it's a little bit different, right? As a church, if we're gonna love people like, if we're gonna value loving everybody as family, then we're gonna treat everybody the same. We're gonna greet everybody with a big hug. We're gonna give everybody the best seats. Now, you know, I think the chairs in here are pretty comfortable. I mean, but let's, let's even take it personal. In my home, man, I, no matter if it was, it's my really annoying neighbor next door or, or the one that I really love down the, down the hall, man, I want to love, I want to welcome in my home, I want to give them the best, I want to show no partiality. Why? Because I understand, right, the value statement, we say oh, we value loving everyone as family, it just doesn't just stop there, it, it's, it, it continues with what God showed us. I mean, because God didn't show me any partiality. James is correct. Man, don't show any partiality because God didn't show any partiality to you. Man, he gave it all up just for you. So do the same thing in every situation. Man, I'm, I'm believing. Now, I, I don't know. I, uh, this morning, I, I'm kind of sniffing a little bit, so I wasn't, I wasn't doing a lot of greeting this morning. I didn't want to greet the new baby in, in the sanctuary either because I was like, I don't want to give them any nastiness, so I tried to stay away. But it, I'm looking forward to the, to the Sunday morning when we come together and we have greeters at the door every Sunday that are there to say, you know what, no matter who comes to that door, man, I want to wrap my arms around them. I'm going to give them the best seat in the house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love them. I'm going to take care of them. And I'm, look, I'm looking forward to that. You know what? It, it starts with us saying, no matter who it is, I'm going to love them the same. I'm going to treat them the same, no matter what their position may be. No matter, you know, when we're, we're thinking about that, how would I treat them if I wanted what I wanted for myself to be true for them? And we're thinking about this Lakeview apartments. All right, and think about different people that, that man, there have been a whole bunch of people that's like, they just lumped in this one area that are, that are underneath, that need an experience of love. How can we, as a group, come together and say, you know what? We're going to show love to them. We're going to show it without any partiality. It may be messy. They may they may not like it at first. They may yell at it. They may, but we don't know what the results will be. But we know, man. If we want to love them, if we want them to have an experience of love, we have to show them that they have no partiality, right. no matter who it is, no matter who it is. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I was thinking about this. I, I was listening also. You know, when we when we do these messages, we don't just uh, you know we're reading. We're reading some things, we're, we're studying some different areas, you know, and I'm, I'm listening to different uh, pastors, and, you know, sometimes I feel really self-conscious at the moment, 
when I talk about kids because I'm like, you know, I don't have yet have parents, so I'm like listening to other people and what they're saying about about uh, being a parent and having kids and how to how to love on their kids. And I'm like, man, I, I can't wait till I can really speak uh, to this in authority. Sometimes when I'm going to make a point, I'm like, oh, should I make it or not? I'm like, you know. But it's something that I, I love seeing uh, is is parents' love for kids and not showing partiality. And sometimes we also need to remember as a parent that, that no matter, you know, there, there's sometimes there's, there's good kids and the bad, they've got different different circumstances. We've got, we've got an awesome family in here that, uh, that man, there's, there's love that's being shown in a way that's amazing because they're not showing any partiality in the family. And so, uh, man, <coughs> love... If we're going to love like family, we've got to not show any partiality. Let's go to this, this last point, the last insight. How, how are we going to be this family that loves people, loves everyone? We've got to choose, this is what we're going to do, we've got to choose joy over grumbling. <coughs> we've got to choose joy over grumbling. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 4. Choosing joy over grumbling. It's my joy to love you. It's my joy to serve you. It's my joy. It's my pleasure, as God would say. 1 Peter chapter 4. And let's read. I didn't put this in. Read verse 8. I love this. Above all, is uh, kind of closing some closing statements, right? And Peter says, above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. I can just uh, pause on that. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of wrongs. Love covers a multitude of ickiness. Love covers a multitude of sins. Things can get messy when we choose to love people. But when we love, love covers a multitude of messiness. Verse 9. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift you have to receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. But awesome as Pastor was talking about evaluating where we're at and what job we have and everything that God has blessed us with. Everything that in here says God has graced us with. God's given us gifts, given us different graces in our lives. Uh, some of us, you know, we do have that extra clothes to give away. Something, you know, some of us do have many gifts of hospitality. Some of us do have uh, ability to make these delicious meals and serve people. I mean, that we have these gifts and time and, and talents that God has given to our life. And he says this to, to do, to offer, to serve one another. But he says in verse 9, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. So as we look at this here, uh, there's, this, there's this cultural thing of hospitality. Okay, people, somebody would come into the town, you know, and, and say, you know, they, they didn't have a place to stay. Okay, we would have a room in my house, and I'm going to offer them hospitality. And, and I know this, anytime, anytime you say something, right, uh, sometimes uh, Sunday morning the pastor, the pastor was, will say, okay, you need to do this, right? Then all of a sudden it becomes an obligation. Yeah, you ever feel? I feel that way sometimes. Right? That I'm, I'm obligated that I have to do this thing, and so sometimes when we talk about cultural norms here for the for the people, it became something. It, it, Peter is getting at that it became something that it wasn't a joy anymore. It was like, okay, I know I got, I have to do this. I, I know that I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to offer this to them. I know I have an extra room, so I need to do this. I need to make more. But we see this this good Samaritan. It was something different. It was an obligation that he had to go, and then he went back and he checked up and he told you, I mean, man, he, he said, what does he need? And I'm going to give him even more. It was joy in his heart. When we see the Father, and he says how the Father, he adopted us as his own children, and he put us on a high place. He said, man, it was his pleasure and will to do so. And then Peter, he reminded us again, do it without grumbling. It's my joy to serve. 
And part of this, if we're going to get this part right, not grumble, have joy, then we've got to get the first part right of, okay, we've got to see them with the Father, see them through the Father. If we see them with value, then it becomes my joy to serve them, my joy to treat them as my joy to grab my arms around them. It's my joy that I would be able to do this for you. That everything that I have, an attitude of gratitude, right? Everything that I have is not my own, has been given to me, my talents and, and the way I am and, and the things and the possessions that I own and the position that I have. Man, then it's my joy. And sometimes as, as I look around and I listen to my uh, different siblings that have, par that have kids, and I, you know, and I know there's some rough moments there when as, you know, the children are like not appreciative of what I'm doing, but you know what, it's my joy. It's the joy of my heart that I get to care, that I get to love, that I get to treat somebody, treat my own family with love. Offer hospitality. What would it look like as a church if, as we were talking earlier, if our homes become open and we not only as a church on Sunday morning have greeters at the door, we're greeting people and saying how much we love them, but then our homes also become an extension of this hospitality because we understand that there's people around us that need this expression of love that we understand and maybe the world around us doesn't and now my home, I'm inviting people in. And I'm having dinner with them, and I'm sharing with them of, of my culture. I'm sharing with them of my food, and I'm sharing with them of my life. And they get to see how things are interacting. They get to see love. The Jesus says this, that they will know that you are my disciples. What? Not because you preach really good. Not because you have really good uh, home. Not because they know you are my disciples. It's because of the love that you have for one another. And the powerful thing that we have as believers, too, in our family units is that we have love. True love. True compassion for one of the truly looking out for, for my spouse's greatest need. Man, I'm looking out for for my children's greatest. Man, we are an environment of love. And he said, man, you will know, they will know that you are my disciples. Not because you've handed up a track. Not, it's because you, you're great at hospitality. You're great at loving. Amen. Can we be a church that's great at loving? And where our homes are, are full of love, where in the workplace they know that man, that man, he, he Andrew, every time they come, he comes into work, and man, he's always joyful, and he always loves, and he's always asking me how I'm doing. I don't understand that. That's a, that's a simple act of love. That I would genuinely, no, how, how you doing? Go to my workplace, right? Uh, how are you doing? How are you doing, man? How's those kids? I, I, I learned you got nine kids. One of my coworkers has nine kids. And they both work like 50 hours a week at the curry in the box. How those kids doing, man? Like, <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me talk. And then they mentioned they, their, their mom and they had a New Year's celebration uh, a, few, a few months ago. And so then I got back to work. How was that celebration? It's showing love, showing genuine care. Man, can, hey, you want to come over and. I can cook a big meal and feed all those nine kids for you. But what, what would it look like, right? That we begin to show them true love, true care. Invite them into our homes where they get to see a, a loving environment maybe they don't experience in their own home or in their own place. And the way they grew up, maybe they didn't experience true love. But we know we have something to show. And Peter here encourages us that when we a show of hospitality, when we offer hospitality, when we offer people into our home, into what we have, do it with joy and do it with God. Yeah. So I believe this year, 2017, if we value loving everybody as family, that we are truly going to go forward, that our family unit is going to experience more love and more joy and more peace because, man, there's an environment of acceptance. There's an environment that, hey, everybody's equal. There's an environment that, hey, we're together in this, right? And, and as a church body, that we're going to go forward because when people come in, no matter what they're dealing with, no matter who, where they come from, no matter what their struggle may be, we're going to say, you know what, there's a chair for you. Hey, uh, I'm going to welcome you. Hey, I'm, I'm going to take you out to dinner. Uh, hey, uh, your part. There's no partiality. So what, is, what does it start with? It starts with us uh, dreaming about this. How would I treat them? If what I wanted for me would be true for them. If I was this a late few apartment going to change, how would it look if I treated them the way I wanted to be treated and gave it to them? Love. Love. 
And next week we're going to continue the series. We're going to be talking about serving. We're going to talk about outrageous generosity. And I'm excited about that because that's another moment that we need to look at Jesus and be in awe. But it's another challenge that I know when we, when we think about outrageous generosity, that that's going to take us further. It's going to, it's going to increase our boundaries in our families and in our workplace and as a church. So this morning, though, before we close, I would love for us to commit to this. Say, you know, 